This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. European Union nations' energy ministers meet in Brussels on Monday in an effort to agree a cap on gas prices, an emergency measure that has split opinion across the bloc as it seeks to tame the energy crisis. National leaders last week urged their ministers to approve the cap on Monday to finalize a policy that has been debated for months without agreement despite two emergency meetings. They are now considering a new compromise proposed by the Czech Republic, which holds the EU's rotating presidency. Oil rose on Monday after falling by more than $2 a barrel in the previous session as optimism over the Chinese economy outweighed concern over a global recession. China, the world's top crude oil importer, is experiencing its first of three expected waves of COVID-19 cases after Beijing relaxed mobility restrictions but said it plans to step up support for the economy in 2023. There is no doubt that demand is being adversely influenced, said Naeem Aslam, analyst at brokerage Avatrade. However, not everything is so negative as China has vowed to fight all pessimism about its economy, and it will do what it takes to boost economic growth. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. A group of investors has tabled resolutions urging four of the world's top oil and gas companies to set broad climate targets for 2030, reviving pressure on the sector after a year that saw governments shift their focus to energy security. Activist group Follow This said it had co-filed the resolutions with six major institutional investors managing $1.3 trillion in assets ahead of the annual general meetings of BP, Chevron, ExxonMobil and Shell next year. In the resolutions, the investors call on the companies to set targets to reduce by 2030 greenhouse gas emissions including those from fuel sold to customers, known as Scope 3 emissions, which account for the vast majority of the sector's pollution. After setting aside almost half a trillion dollars to date tackling its energy crisis, Germany is also poised to take on the risks associated with 216 billion euros, 229 billion dollars, of derivatives built up by energy giant Uniper. Germany is nationalizing Uniper in what is the biggest corporate bailout in the country's history, after Russia's move to choke off gas through Europe's biggest economy into chaos. Uniper has already booked billions of euros of losses on derivatives, exacerbating a crisis as it rushed to plug the gap left after Russia turned off the taps. But even before the Ukraine conflict, the gas giant was under pressure and had to turn to German state bank KFW for support. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Steel futures and prices of steelmaking ingredients in China tumbled on Monday as surging local COVID-19 cases prompted traders to book some profit from a recent rally spurred by the easing of coronavirus restrictions. Top steel producer China is in the first of an expected three waves of COVID-19 cases this winter, according to the country's chief epidemiologist, forcing many people to stay home. The most traded iron ore for May delivery on China's Dalian Commodity Exchange ended daytime trade 3.7% lower at 793 yuan and 50 fen, $113.75, a ton. Gold prices inched higher on Monday as a softer dollar counted pressure on the non-yielding bullion from expectations of higher interest rates in the United States for longer than earlier expected. Spot gold rose 0.2% to $1,795.97 per ounce by 11.17 GMT. U.S. gold futures gained 0.3% to $1,806.10. The dollar index dipped 0.2%, making gold less expensive for overseas buyers. However, to see a more sustained rebound in the value of the yellow metal, we need to get closer to the point where the Fed rate hikes end, UBS analyst Giovanni Stornovo said. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural India is set to offer 2 to 3 million tons of wheat to bulk consumers such as flour millers and biscuit makers as part of efforts to cool record high prices, two government sources said, even as state reserves have dropped to the lowest in six years. Wheat prices have surged in India this year after a sudden rise in temperatures hit crop yields and output. A jump in exports following Russia's invasion of Ukraine also pushed up local wheat prices, 
prompting India, the world's second biggest producer of the grain, to order a ban on exports in May, but that has failed to stop domestic prices rising. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.